in the history of HBCU basketball, there's never been a true Ben Major program. And while we've got a legacy full of legends and even a couple of March Cinderella's, an HBCU hoop squad is yet to play conference basketball in the league with mid-major designation. It's NCAA March Madness, the number 16 seed, North Carolina A&T. So when North Carolina A&T joined the Colonial Athletic Conference, they put themselves in position to become HBCU basketball's first real mid-major. Because not only are the Aggies joining the mid-major league, they're bringing a team loaded with young talent. And a coaching staff that's proven they know how to recruit. As North Carolina A&T brings one of the highest ranked freshmen to ever sign at an HBCU into his first season playing conference basketball in the CAA. I proudly always knew I was going to A&T. I will be committed to North Carolina A&T. Yeah. All the schools in the SEC and Big 12 around my area, you know, uh, I was talking to them. But other people look at it, oh, he was a four star, he was 84 in the country. Like, I'm 84, I'm the, there's 83 people better. I tore my meniscus and I had to have surgery on my knee. All of 2020, 2021 was real hard on me, like not being able to play. I had to miss my senior year of basketball. You know, it was rough, for real. I was gonna be the best freshman in the country, just like I was the best senior in the country. I've been out for so long. I done came through so much. I done worked so hard to get to this point. Before the injury, during the injury, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. But whatever I do, it better be special. My, my son, he about one and a half. I breed dogs too, he the nicest uh, blue XL in the world. You feel me, 135 solid. 20, 29 inch head, you see? Who is the boy? Yo. I listen to songs I can relate to through my life, for real, for real. So I don't hear me listen to a little Uzi, a little baby, for real. Can't relate to it. Where you at? And got my little thing going. You hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I, man. Uh, I. Was on there or what? That's if you don't even know you can rap. Nah. <laughs> Nobody know right <laughs> now. You feel? I told you was in the studio yesterday. I told I told my kid folks just got out. Uh, the day before yesterday, I was gonna call him. He need. You feel me? A little bit of publicity. Hop on that beat and go crazy. Yeah. Give me a bag. Yeah. Give me some money. Uh, we're gonna sit back and now. This is where? Yeah. I was in the freestyle just I was just in the by my head. Best chef in all the land, man. That's what I'm right talking every about. Morning. Have a good by day. name. Like you I see how you can tell what I want. <laughs> I already know. I'm uh, no, it's great. Like I tell everybody, you keep hope alive, like sure. Jesse Jackson used to sure. say. All right. For sure. For sure. Today gonna be a good day. For sure. Forty-eight years since ANT was conceived that we got the master's program. Uh, up until the first forty-eight, it was just a bachelor's program. But in the forty-eighth year, they included a master's program. By the time Dr. Ford came, it was 50 years before we get the PhD program. Originally it was called what? The agriculture and uh, what? For the colored race, <laughs> right? And then they are, you know, it, it changed to reflect the growth and culture of the African American people. Uh, to include, and each time, each time we grew as a people, the name would change. Very good. Duncan, what you talking about? Do you hear anything? That particularly this class that you said, I didn't know that. 
The Greensboro Four got you. The thing I like about that uh, with the Greensboro Four that I try to put emphasis on is that that is a moment. Y'all get what I'm saying? It's a moment in time that creates a movement, right? And sometimes folks get stuck in the moment and they make the whole class about the moment. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do that. The moment was significant and it, it created and generated a, a lot of movement. But is that all of a &T? No, no, no. That was just how we handle the what? The moment, right, to create the what? Movement. Duncan is a star. <laughs> <laughs> now, I didn't know really who Duncan was, and someone told me to check this video out, and it showed me him when they recruited you for the school. I said, oh, okay, I got a famous, I got a basketball player all the way to the NBA. All right, don't forget me, Duncan. We you. make all that money. <laughs> Y'all take care. Man, I hope they don't make me run no mile today. Oh, my gosh. That time was horrible last time. So I ran like, ran like seven, seven minutes. 30 some seconds. Oh, like 705, I think. That was my first time running a mile since I've been, been healthy. Yeah, baby. Let's get it. The Indian run. All right, we're going four laps a mile. All right. Our time is under eight minutes. Okay. What'll happen is JB will run to the front of the line. All right. He's in front now. After that, a mile will run to the front of the line. He's in front now. So the guy in the front has to set the pace for the guy in the back to come catch up. But keep in mind, we must be eight minutes. Set, 20, go. 20, 20, 20, 20. Let's go. Oh, it's two minutes. Go on. I was on camp. Marcus left, Dunk right, Well, left, Harry right. Try to move here. Oh, you gonna burn some. South Carolina versus Texas action going on. He from somewhere. I don't three man, South Carolina man, Broad River. Y'all know what it is. He from wherever that is. You Broad know, River. you know where I'm from, man. Hey. You know where I'm from, man. man. Ain't even from Come Dallas, on, bro. Hold on. Man's ain't even Hold from on. Dallas, though. Wait. Bro. You know where I'm from, Blue man. Side, yeah, bro. You know All where that. I'm from, man. Yeah, you get it. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 Men's basketball, we're getting it in. Off season. Off season ain't even started all the way. We still gonna get it in. We get a dumbbell. Alright? Put across your hips, blue bridge from the floor. Eight. This whole circuit is eight reps. Four sets. Do we understand? Uh -huh. Let's work. Toe touches, 10. 
Russian twist, 10 each side. Mm. All right, we'll hit those two together. All right, once you hit those three rounds, we'll run the rack to finish. All right, anybody know what run the rack is? No. All right, we'll start off with curls here. All right, fives, hit you five. Hit tens, five. All right, you go all the way down so you can't no more. All right, yeah. when you finish, whatever yeah. you got to, all right? Bro. Five, 10, 15, 20. All right, you got to the 40s. You got 40 dips to match. All right, run the rack. We're gonna go to arms. Last part. That's the control. Control. Hey, coach, up. You know, you want to get in here and work out in the town. All right, Coach Martin. What's the day we gotta be back? Uh, thirty first. Thirty first. Thirty first. Thirty first. Thirty first. All right. Sunday, May 30th, start workouts the first, 30th. Make sure you're here and ready to go on sure. that day. Everybody got it? Mm -hmm. uh, we checked out on the apartments yesterday. All right, so what we got, guys, um, there ain't a whole lot of availability. All right, so you can put your name on the wait list, but ain't no guarantees. So we're going to work things out for you guys to stay at Providence. All right, make sure your money's right and everything's good so we can stay at Providence. All right, that's, that's going to be plan A. If anything else show up, then we'll let you know. All right, um, that's going to be the deal. All right, so good. Hey, this was a good, good, uh, good preseason, postseason, guys. Great postseason. We won in the postseason. We won. Yeah. The postseason. We won in the postseason. Got through it. Guys got better, got stronger. All right, don't lose this conditioning. Because when we come back in, 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 in June, we're going we're gonna, to we're be working. Everybody got it? Yes, sir. Break it down, yeah, baby. Yeah, Let's go. Nice, 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 Chancellor comes in, he's watching practice, and he said, Coach, um, what do you think about the Big South Atlantic Sun Conference? And he said, well, we're going to make a move to one of these leagues. And so we end up going to the Big South Conference. And then, you know, obviously during that season, we get the, the, the nod that we're moving to the Colonial Athletic Conference, which is a different move. If you can win in the CAA and be successful, I mean, your next calling card could be an SEC job or an ACC job. That's what the that's what the uh, the statistics say. That's what the that you know that's what it's been in terms of coaches that have come into that league, especially young black coaches. Uh, Kevin Keats, Earl, Earl Grant, both came into the league as young assistant, young African American assistants, and both in uh, within five years are now ACC coaches. And um, they both took programs that were kind of, you know, College of Charleston has traditionally been good in basketball, but hadn't figured it out in terms of the uh, NCAA tournament in a, in a few years. And the same thing with Wilmington. We're still in HBCU and we're competing at the highest level that a black college, an HBCU has ever competed at in basketball. And I think going to the CAA now, which is the 12th best league, I tell people, hey, listen, you know, MEAC, a lot of times, RPI-wise, 30 to 31. The Big South was right at 28, I believe, this year in terms of RPI. I mean, the CAA, they were 12. That's a huge jump in terms of competition on a night-to-night -night basis. It's not one game. A lot of people always say, ah, oh, man, it's not that much difference. Yeah, it is a big difference. It's easy to prepare for one game. You go play a team in the CAA one time, can a MEAC team or a SWAC team or a Big South team beat a, a, a Colonial Athletic Conference team on a one game uh, schedule? Yes, yes, they can, it's been done before. But to compete in a league like that night in and night out, that's the difference. The coaches in the CAA, the writers, all right, nobody believes that this HBCU is gonna come in the CAA and have a chance to win the championship in year one. After two years away from the game, it was time for Duncan Powell to make his long awaited return to the court. And the Aggies' first game of the season was against Edward Waters University, a Division II HBCU at the Jacksonville floor. And while the rest of the Aggies were busy putting on a show, Duncan Powell was just trying to shake off the rust. And 
while his only bucket was a goal team. He earned his minutes on defense. And the Aggies started the 2022-2023 season 1-0 with a 161 win over the D2 HBCU from Florida. But by their final home game of 2022 against crosstown rival UNC Greensboro, Duncan has shook off all the rust. It was starting to show Aggie Nation while he was the top 100 player in his class. It's crazy, like, I hit my first three, I thought I got shot or something. Like, While guys like Cam Wood, Marcus Watson, and Demetri Horton began to assert themselves as leaders of the Aggie Pack heading into CAA play, Duncan was gaining a reputation as a problem off the bench, going for nine points and five rebounds in North Carolina a and 56 win over UNCG. I gotta get used to that. Like, I'm used to turning around there. The recruitment of Duncan Powell started when uh, Adrian called me. He said, Coach, my cousin is decommitting from, from Arkansas. And I said, you know, what does he want to do? He, he, you know, he, that's cool. I mean, who, who else is looking at him? Oklahoma, Texas? He's like, Coach, I want you to recruit him. I said, you think he's going to be interested? He said, man, just recruit him, Coach. And so I called Duncan. I remember the first conversation, man. And uh, it was funny. We were talking. And as I was looking at some film, I, you know, I had made an a effort to start recruiting um, uh, Houston. And so I used to go down to a tournament, the GMI tournament in Houston. Um, and I remember seeing Duncan's team. Um, and Duncan was on a team with, uh, with Sasser that's at Houston right now. They're one of their best players. I remember this light-skinned dude running up and down, playing hard. And um, so when Adrian, you know, when he was telling me about Duncan, I went back and I was like, man, I was at this game right here. You know, this is your cousin? And so I was talking to Duncan, he was like, yeah, man, that was my team. You know what I mean? I was, I was telling some guys that I called uh, that were, that were uh, rising uh, seniors on that team that year in recruiting. And so I told Duncan, I said, listen, man, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Are you interested in coming to an HBCU? And he said, uh, yeah, coach. I said, listen, if you say yes, and you're serious. I'm gonna recruit you harder than anybody in the country. I'm gonna recruit you harder than anybody in the country, and I'm gonna make it hard for you to say no to NT. And he said, "Well, coach, that's that's what I want. Every kid has uh, an environment that they thrive in, and I think that for a long time, a lot of these kids go to high schools in in, in uh, parts of a city. You know, one of these." Uh, you know, Memphis or Montgomery, Alabama or Birmingham, where they go to these HBCU high school. And so if it's good for them in high school, why isn't it good for them in college? But I think that, you know, their friends or, you know, the their, their, their people that they compete against, they're, they're going to these schools and like, ah, I can't, I can't, I can't go to the HBCU because they, they're not in a league that's, you know, that, that, that's where I want to play. And so now, for Duncan, it's crazy because I recruited Duncan to play in the MEAC. Okay, during the process, we moved to the Big South. And during his time here, he sat out this year because of an injury. Now we're moving to the Colonials. And so it's moving up, trending up for him. And um, I think he has an unbelievable opportunity to uh, continue to be one of the premier freshmen in the country. North Carolina a t came into their 2023 CAA conference schedule playing host to the top two teams in the league. And first up on the schedule for North Carolina a t 
was the top 25 ranked college of Charleston Cougars. Execute what we got to do out there tonight. We can have a hell of a night. We got what it takes in this locker room. If we're all together and we execute and do what we're supposed to do, we can be in here dancing after this game. Don't be surprised at the pace because they are going to push that thing up hard. We must locate these shooters. We can't let these guys get them. They are a hot starting team. 11 nothing, 13 nothing. Not tonight. And the Aggies started the game off following that same blueprint that was laid out in the locker room. As North Carolina a t kept it close with the number 23 team in the nation early in the first half. College of Charleston is in the top 25 for a reason. And the Cougars 14-2 run to end the first half was just the beginning. College of Charleston ran up a 20-point lead by halftime that stretched to as much as 30 at one point in the second. And while the Cougars left Greensboro with a 13-point win, the Aggies got a career-high 30 points from Cam Woods, a sophomore guard from Bessemer, Alabama, who's quickly becoming A&T's number one option on offense. The Aggies also got a career-high 20 points from the highest-ranked recruit in North Carolina A&T history, redshirt freshman Duncan Powell. I keep my phone on D&D all day long, like, I don't be really want to talk to nobody. Like I said the other day, like, I get into a trance, like, feel me, I don't be want no bad energy, nobody hit me on no BS, none of that. For real, I just try to get into my zone, like, my subconscious, like, it ain't really no routine. My routine is not having no routine, you feel me, like, a lot of time through the season, the first day, I was thinking too much. You feel me? Like, I'm Duncan Powell. You feel me? God put me here for a reason. So it's like, I just got to do what I do. Like, all that thinking, all that routine, all the superstitions, like, I just ignore all that. I literally just go into a zombie. Game day, y'all boys ready? Yes, sir. Ski, you know the vibe. Big dog, man. You know the vibe, man. Let me get on camera with me rubbing the shack. Come on, dog. 
Coming to the Corbett Center only two days after the nationally ranked College of Charleston Cougars was the 14-3 Seahawks of UNC Wilmington. And the perennial Ben Major Cinderellas from UNCW came to Greensboro riding the nation's longest active win streak into their first ever conference matchup with North Carolina A&T. And after a career night just two days ago, Duncan Powell got his first start of the season. Oh, But he also got a taste of the roller coaster ride that is mid major college basketball. Powell finds a way to get his first bucket to fall plus a foul. But the scrappy Seahawks frustrated Duncan and the Aggies for the whole first half. And when things weren't going his way, Duncan knew it was time to start trying to make stuff happen for his teammates. Duncan gets the steal, runs the break, and finds Kyle Duke for the contested bucket. Then it was the shifty UNCW guard combo of Shaquem Felix and Jamari Thomas making plays to the bucket, giving the Seahawks a nine point lead with four minutes left in the half. Aggies looking to play some catch up. Demetri Court straight to the chest of the defender for the bucket plus one. Cam Woods continuing to showcase his ability as a high level mid major scorer. Duncan Powell, he gets another great steal, but Jamari Thomas gets it right back, 
taking away the transition pass to get to the Seahawks. Dope. But a Cam Woods three at the buzzer cuts the USCW lead back down to three at the break. And coming into the second half, UNCW showed why they had won a nation's best 13 games in a row, opening up a 15 point lead halfway through the second frame of basketball. But the Aggies fight back. Cam Woods taking matters into his own hands, chopping that Seahawk lead down bucket by bucket. Then it's Horton again, scrappy with the rebound and the putback, and it's a three-point UNCW lead with two minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock. The Aggie D forces a turnover, giving themselves a chance to close that gap all the way shut. Demetri Court pulls the Aggies within one with the mid-range jet. But becoming a force in mid-major basketball means you gotta close out games against good teams. And UNCW was prepared for the late push from North Carolina and the team. And this bucket off the inbound lob to Chazari and White with two seconds left on the shot clock was just enough to defer the Aggies' dreams of an upset as North Carolina a t fell to UNCW 66-61. And while the Aggies' first big at-home conference test as members of the CAA didn't end in victory, and that's your ball game, your final score, UNC Wilmington 66, North Carolina a and 61. They've shown they can play with the best in the country. As North Carolina ANT basketball continues to build itself into an HBCU hoops mid major. Well, what we want to do is just talk about the NIL deal with Peace. You know what I'm saying? Kind of okay. get into it. Uh, kind of explain to him what it is and what he needs. You know what I'm saying? So, this is what Peace has proposed. Peace is proposing a $1,000 song bonus with 50% paid up front as soon as you upload your first intro. And then six months in, the rest of it, once you've got a good flow of um, videos coming in on it. And then on top of that, whatever you make behind your paywall, while you sell yourself, how many subscribers that revenue goes to you as well. How much on top of take from me? So they take in like, um, my understanding, they take like 25% off of that. So 75% of that behind it, they all close to you. And it's all, it's, so it's all about being yourself. That's all I want you to do is just be yourself. So the same stuff you're doing now on Instagram, the same videos you're doing, you can do the exact same stuff. Because the whole idea is you got an infectious personality, people are buying you. So the whole idea is that now the stuff you're doing, you put a snippet out on Instagram, on your social media, you put the rest behind the paywall with peaks, and now people pay to follow your page and your channel, and that's how you make your revenue. Um, yeah, you set the rate, you set the setup, you got your own contact there, so she works you through, hey, when it's time to step it up, they kind of coach through, try to make your stuff more marketable, so it's, um, it's kind of a win-win situation. So all you gotta keep doing is what you already do. I, I just, I gotta figure out, we gotta figure out like, what it is, what's the content that's gonna get posted, you know, it's like, mm -hmm. what, like, of course, some, maybe some basketball highs, you know, maybe some, different stuff here and there, but it's like, what, what's gonna be the basis of what people see on my page? Right. Like, it's just yeah, like, yeah. like, I, I, I think it should be, I think it should be work out. I mean, it's honestly, chronically, like we can use that as a promotional tool to chronicle your content. Because at the end of the day, what we're wanting to do is just continue up your profile. Using this as a piece to do that, as a tool to do that. You know what I'm saying? So, 
I mean, the more we can do that, the more opportunities will arise, you know what I'm saying, coming up, you know. Because the anticipation that you actually plan next season is going to be huge. You got to work on the build up. You know? Once I start playing, I want to convert it more to like DP, start some DP 30. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just yeah, make yeah. it more just your mind, my, like, that's Duncan's power shirt. For one, there's no actual quality college jersey like the one he makes. Right. And then on top of that, there's no HBCU jersey that, you know, people are rock how people are rock the Larry Johnson, Charlotte Hornets jersey. No, like, there's none of that. So it's like, it's sure. gonna go crazy. So but what we would like to do too is, once we get this done, then we reach out to A&T famous and A&T alumni like Terrence J, and people like that, the way it's on social media. Yeah. Like we send them box. What we do is we package up, we send them box, we send them your jersey exclusively to these celebrities that went to the, your school. And then they make a post on social media and be like, yo, appreciate the dog for sending me the jersey, da 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 You know what I'm saying? And then that, that's going to take it to another level. After another grueling month of conference play in the CAA. It's Woods guarded by Carlos. Down to two, down the right side. High arcing shot, no good. The follow goes up and in. And the rebound is saved by Duncan Powell. Running it down is Stevenson Moore. Can't get a shot off. Here comes Watson. Cleared for takeoff. And he slams it off. The Aggies headed into the final game of the regular season with a 7 and 9 conference record. Looking for one more win to head into Washington, D.C. as the seventh seed in the conference tournament. But the final game of the Aggies' regular season wasn't just a regular game. It was the first CAA matchup with one of their longest HBCU rivals, the Hampton Pirates. And their first and only matchup in Greensboro as members of the Big South back in 2022 had everything you could ask for in a black college hoops rivalry. And after making last season's Pirate villain walk the plank, Hampton sailed into town with a new swashbuckler ready to play his part. Enter Jordan Nesbitt, a sophomore from St. Louis who came to Greensboro eager to embrace the role of the villain of Club Corbin. As the Aggies and Pirates locked up in one of the toughest games of the year. Aggies start the game off with some hot shooting. Threes from Demetri Corton and Duncan Powell put the Aggies up six early. Then it's time to say hello to the bad guy. Jordan Nesbitt shows off the 3 and D by knocking the ball loose from Duncan Powell, then knocking one down from long range. Followed up by Silky up and under for two, and the Aggie lead is down to four. But Duncan Powell starts to heat up, showing off his versatility as a three-point shooter and a big dog in the paint. But Jordan Nesbitt was out here doing everything he could to keep the Pirates in. And by the time Marquise Godwin knocked down this three at the halftime buzzer, Hampton had cut the ANT lead back down to six. But the Aggies came out the break looking to get it all back. Marcus Watson pump fakes the three into some nice give and go action with Dunk Powell. Back to Marcus Watson. That's a four piece, and AT is looking good with a 14 point lead with 10 minutes left in the game. Hampton not going away easy. The Pirates start putting buckets together and slash that lead back down to six. Duncan Powell comes back into the game for a good stretch of play on both ends of the court, and the Aggies manage to keep Hampton at bay for the moment. But Jordan Nesbitt played his position. Back-to-back -back big buckets from the brash young gunner from St. Louis put Hampton down two with a chance to tie or take the lead in the final second. The 
Aggies get one last chance to win it in regulation. But the Duncan Powell put back is short, and we're headed to OT. Hampton getting it started right from the tip off. Pirates up three immediately at the start of OT. Dennis Love betters with the steal, Duncan Powell with the finish, and the Aggies are back up one with two minutes left on the clock. Nesbitt taking it to the rack, but Marcus Watson sends it to the bleacher. Trey Thomas coming off the bench to knock down the crucial layup that puts Hampton up one. A minute left in OT. Marcus Watson finding Austin Johnson uncontested for two. Aggies back up one. Dennis Jordan Nesbitt fouling Love Bettis on his way to the hoop. And the North Carolina a and fans send the bad guy to the bench in familiar fashion. Now it's Hampton Ball, down one. Ten seconds left on the clock. And the Trey Thomas fadeaway is blocked by Marcus Watson, and the Aggies win 73-72 and head to Washington, D.C. as the seventh seed in the 2023 CAA Conference Tournament. That's a tournament-level basketball game. Both teams were like we were one and done. Our last game, our last two games for that matter, for them to be so intense and close, um, really, really is good for us coming into the conference tournament because all of them are going to be close. Duncan coming off the bench, doing the same things he's doing now as a starter. He's, he's, he, I mean, he, his growth has been tremendous. His growth has been tremendous. Um, you know, I mean, I, I kid play in two, he didn't play basketball in two years. For him to come in here, coming off that injury, and just continue to develop and get better and better, I'm extremely proud of him for the things he's accomplished uh, this season. I didn't think I was going to hoop again. Like this time last year, I thought I was going to be, you know, like in the streets or whatever. So, like, being able to hoop is a real blessing. So, uh, more than anything, I'm just, you know, grateful to be here. We can keep up with anybody. We don't have close games with everybody. We don't, you feel me, beat whoever. Like, the, the tournament for the taking, you know, the CAA is ours, but we just got to play the right way. This is it, CAA fans. This is it. From the Entertainment Sports Arena in Washington, D.C. It's time for the 2023 Jersey Mike CAA Tournament Championship. As the Aggies made their way to Washington, D.C. for the first ever CAA Conference Tournament, they weren't the only newcomers pulling up to the nation's capital looking to represent the Colonial in the big dance. And ironically or not, the first round of the tournament had all four CAA freshman squads facing off against one another, with North Carolina a and seventh seed being the highest ranked out of the bunch. And with Hampton taking an excruciating 164 loss to Monmouth in the opening game of tournament play. Another triple. Monmouth is feeling it a perfect the Aggies were already the lone HBCU in D.C. when they pulled up to the Entertainment and Sports Arena for their first round game against the Stony Brook Seawolves. And after splitting their two regular season matchups, Stony Brook knew they were in for a fight against North Carolina a &T. One of our goals, uh, quite honestly, was to be the last new team still standing. We weren't, you know, overly thrilled that that's who we drew. And the Aggies came to D.C. still riding high from that overtime rivalry win the week before. Running up a 14-0 lead in the first six minutes of the game behind the offensive production of Duncan Powell, Cam Wood, and Marcus Watson. But Stony Brook's Frankie Polacelli chopped that Aggie lead down bucket by bucket, scoring 10 quick points to help the Seawolves tie the game at 17 by the under eight media timeout. Then it's Tyree Zellis. Marcus Watson, another big three. And the Ken Woods steal and score puts a &T back up set.
But both of these teams came to the conference tournament prepared to battle. And Stony Brook claws its way back to within three by the halftime bus. And in a game that proved to be a microcosm of North Carolina A&T's whole season, the version of the Aggies that went up 14-0 to start the game wasn't the same one that came out the locker room for the second half. While Frankie Polacelli was splashing and grabbing his way to the first 30.16 rebound game at the CAA tournament since David Robinson. The last 30.15 rebound game in the championship, 1986 quarterfinals, 32 points, 19 rebounds by David Robinson. The Aggies just couldn't get buckets to fall. Going 9 for 31 in the second half, en route to a 76-61 loss in a conference tournament game where they were the higher seed. You know, it, it, in the MEAC, wasn't as feasible in the Big South. It, the conference wasn't as feasible. Got to get bigger. Got to get bigger, uh, and uh, got to get stronger. You know, um, you know. One of the things um, I think that hurt us uh, was was our strength down the stretch. You know, what I'm saying that 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 was big. You know, what I'm saying, uh, you know, a, a, as the season wears on, if uh, you know, if, if consistency of, 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 you know, like being in the weight room and things of that nature, you got to, in order, in order to sustain uh, the physicality of this league. And even with the tough first round exit, Aggie basketball left Washington, D.C. hopeful that they'd be returning to battle next year with the same talented core of young players. But in the transfer portal era of college basketball, this year and next can be two totally different realities. A lot of Aggie pride everywhere we go, you know, it's cool uh, just going to the corner store, you know, people knowing my name or like, you know, just people knowing my name or where I'm from or that I'm on the basketball team. So like, it, Greensboro is definitely a, a HBCU printed city. So, you know, you can really feel it. We on the east side of Greensboro right now. You see they got the, this ain't got nothing to do with the school. Like, they got the uh, Greensboro Fort right there. So that just show you how deeply rooted uh, a and and HBCUs are in the Greensboro, North Carolina. I've always said this, I don't care if it's HBCU or PWI, everybody got issues. Everybody got issues. We like to uh, magnify our issues sometimes, and it makes it seem like we're the only ones that have the issues. We're the only one that have budget issues. We're the only one that have facility issues. That's not the case. There are many PWIs on the low to mid-major uh, level that have the same budget issues, that have the same facility issues, that have the same issues that stop kids from coming to the university. We kind of magnify it a little bit and try to make it seem like 
we're the only one taking bus trips. We're not. All right? The Big South takes bus trips. The Atlantic Sun takes bus trips. The NEC takes bus trips. Everybody, those guys are taking bus trips just like the MEAC, just like the SWAC. Those guys are taking bus trips. All right? And so once you separate it, whether it be PWI or HBCU, what do you have to offer? Okay, what do you have to offer the potential recruit? And so when you pull up on Bimbo and you come to a and everybody's eyes lit, light up because you got buildings. You got your landscaping is good. The campus looks vibrant. You got people walking around. So what I read on the Internet and what I see on social media matches up to what I see when I come on campus. The masses really focus on um, what's going on in HBCU football. But what we're doing in, in HBCU basketball here at A&T, um, we're pushing that envelope even more.